Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. Welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. It's WrestleMania week this Saturday and Sunday because, of course, the WrestleMania is now a two-night event. Has been for a little thing? while now. A little while. Really? COVID. Thanks, COVID. Uh, so, yeah. Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be live well, doing our... Doing, what's that? All weekend? Yeah, it's like a 48-hour stream. You didn't know this? Where were Man, you during the meeting today? I got plans this weekend. Today? I better change them. Where were you during the meeting? You know, you're not attending the meetings. Like I didn't get a, I didn't get an email about meeting. Oh, yeah. I think you just missed your emails. You got to make sure to VIP those emails. Anyways. How do you do that? We are going to be live this Saturday and this Sunday doing watch-alongs and reviews. Larson, can you give us the look of shock on your face when uh, Sammy Zane I find out at the work all weekend? <laughs> Your jaw becomes unhinged. In- interesting. It's I'm like, like a, a snake. snake trying to swallow a huge rat. <laughs> oh, wow. A big rat, huh? They didn't unhinge their jaw for a big rat. Oh, Speaking yeah. Speaking of I rats. Mean, I for any, any, any sort of uh, 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 yeah, rats or, or other rodents, perchance, yes. Speaking of rats, we're going to talk about Eddie Kingston and his CM Punk, uh, res- the response that he's got to CM Punk's criticisms of AEW. But first, we're going to talk about Cody Rhodes on the precipice. Of winning that WWE championship. Oh, boy. Uh, he responded to CM you know, Punk. A quick aside here before we get into this. It's been an interesting roller coaster uh, that you've been on of late. Cody's number one fan and then number one bloodline fan. And now it seems like you've kind of resigned yourself. Yeah. Regardless where you stand, stand and stand in terms of Cody. Yeah, good pun there. That it's it's inevitable at this point Cody wins. Yeah, well, you know, dude, I'll be honest with you. I'm not afraid to admit I'm not I'm I'm not too proud to admit that there's a lot of coping involved. Last year was fairly traumatic uh at WrestleMania. Uh and uh and yeah, you know, I I, I got to go through the psychological, you know, motions to to come to grips with with everything, but now I'm free three days, bitches, till Cody Rhodes finally gets his hands on that WWE championship. Well, Steve, uh, again, we'll get to the story here in a second, but I don't know how many more days we could do this. So maybe today, Saturday and Sunday. So let's put our ones up. Oh, yeah, dude. While we can. these ones up right here. All right, yeah. let's get into this. So Cody, just a few days after CM Punk was on MMA Hours mm-hmm. with Ariel many Hawani, hours. he was on Wednesday. Is that right? Yeah, yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. Or early yesterday, whatever. Time's fluid, as Steve likes to say. And he was asked to respond to CM Punk's assessment of AEW. Total recap, Phil said, AEW, not a real business. Not concerned with making money, selling tickets, et cetera, et cetera. Cody, though, said he didn't agree with Phil's assessment. These transcripts come to you from Russell Talks. what Cody said. Quote, that's his assessment. It is not my assessment. It's always important for me to remind people that I am so proud of what me, Matt, Nick, uh, Kenny, Tony, Bernie, Brandy, Dana, and Chris, and I name all these people because I was in all those meetings. As much as the internet will try and spin a narrative one way, if one of those people had not been at the startup level, the company would not have happened. I'm so proud of what was created. I'm so insanely proud of what it does for the industry overall, for wrestlers and their well-being. And I have an unbelievable love for so many people in that locker room, including the Bucks and Kenny who we bonded forever over this thing that we did. So it's not my assessment. In my time there, the infrastructure was just being built. We were trying new things. It was a startup company, and I wish them nothing but the best. So we'll get to the Eddie Kingston thing here in a bit because it kind of – there's. so we've seen uh, some uh, uh, people in AEW like Eddie and Tony Schiavone who were pretty much like, I don't care. Let's move on with with our day and our lives. Yeah. CM Punk's not here. Why do, what do we care what he has to say? Yeah. And then we saw Dynamite last night. Adam Copeland opened the show with a very raw, raw, yay AEW promo. Uh, there was footage on social media of Dax Harwood, who was at least one time a friend with CM Punk. 
kind of doing the same. Yeah. To close the collision tapings. Yeah. Um, so it seems like people are falling into one or one of two kind of sides in this. Either we're yay pro AEW, we'll say what the the positives they bring to the business, which I think CM Punk mentioned that. Cody mentions it here. If nothing else, AEW is important. A healthy AEW is important for the wrestling business because it provides another place for wrestlers to ply their trade and make, hopefully, a good paycheck doing so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hopefully by doing that, elevates the pay for everybody because now there's competition for their services. I think it's incredibly silly for anybody to suggest anything otherwise. The the importance of competition in any industry is vital for, uh, you know, an improved product across the board, you know, improved conditions for the workers of that product. It is absolutely asinine to think that AEW shouldn't exist or, or doesn't have a place. It, it's, exactly. it's awesome. Um, I... <laughs> I am just, I, I think that, you know, when I watched, when I watched, uh, and you got to keep in mind the CM Punk comments, you know, the guy had a, he, if seemingly he had like a bit of a good spell there, but in the end, it, it seemingly just left a bad taste in his mouth. And I'm not shocked that that's the case, you know, nor am I. we talked about his interview on the MMA hours and how it was from his perspective and he clearly omitted you know a, a variety of things i saw one person make the point on twitter about how the jack perry story probably wouldn't have been an issue had it not leaked out to the press and there is probably an assumption out there that cm punk's camp i would think certainly by jack perry that would be the assumption you know, put the story out there. If this had just remained, you know, hey, he wanted to do a thing. Punk said, no, don't do this thing because this is why. And then that was it. And nobody knew about it. Then fine. It seemed like it'd the, be a non-issue. It'd yeah. be a non-issue. It seemed to be Jack Perry saying what he said at All In as a response to this information going public, not because it was a thing. So, so CM Punk is not, you know, as much as everybody, nobody wants to be the villain in their own story. And, uh, and he said what he said from his own perspective, fine, whatever. Um, he's got his reasons for doing so, for framing it that way. He didn't have mm -hmm. a great experience there. Of course, his comments are going to reflect as such. AEW needs to stop giving a shit. You got that right, buddy. Last night's promo that Edge started with, and then Dax getting on the mic at the end to rah-rah the crowd ain't necessary. And maybe it's because the DNA of the company has so much Tony Khan in it, and we all know where he came from, the message boards. You know, he was a fan on message boards back in the day, and maybe that type of personality, and we've seen this with his social media use, maybe amplifies the importance overstates, I should say, the importance of social media. Uh, don't, nobody gives a shit. Like, you know, CM Punk said what he said, and people are, pe fan, there is a certain fan base that could be overly hypercritical about AEW to a disingenuous degree. Yes. To, to leave it alone. No, this is what they do. If they want to respond to the CM Punk's comments, I'm saying this tug in cheek. Yeah, of course. So don't take this seriously, anybody. Yeah. But it made me laugh thinking about it, so I'm going to say it and see if it makes you laugh. This is what you do. You don't put edgy Adam Copeland out there to do a rah-rah promo. Yeah. This is what you do. You release the all-in tapes. Oh, wow. The security camera. That's what you do. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, that'd be kind of awesome, to be honest with that'd you. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Which no. they're not going to do because seemingly any sort of backstage altercation, whether it be brawl out, whether it be brawl in, whatever the case, it seems like they want to keep that all hush-hush. Yeah. No, if From, you, you know, the, the corporate standpoint. If you want to get the truth No out transparency. There, that, that's what you do, yeah. Tony Khan, Tony Khan was asked about what CM Punk had to say on the MMA hours during his Supercard of Honor media call. No comment. Yeah. Yeah. was his response wasn't going to talk about it and and i get it it's not like nothing cm punk said i feel like at least on mma hours required 
an official response. I know. It I was agree. his perspective. Yeah. Obviously, he omitted some stuff that would maybe have framed him as somewhat culpable in some of the stuff that happens. Yeah. It, it's his narrative. It's his perspective. Um, and it, it, it also them being quiet about it is in line with generally how they approach these things, which is kind of a lack of transparency when it terms to comes to stuff backstage you know what you know what i like i like the the i thought that dynamite had its ups and downs last night uh, i thought yeah. the, the the final segment was awesome with joe that was really Swerve, good right yeah those two dudes are, bo- are 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 going full steam ahead with a really good story leading to the title match at dynasty that should be the entirety of dynamite that philosophy I don't need as as somebody who has enjoyed AEW's product lately, who has you know always appreciated what they bring to the table in terms of good matches. I don't need anybody to tell me, hey, this is you know I'm looking for positives and we're gonna we're this is an important place that we're at and I don't need you to tell me that you're taking me out of your story, which was sort of one of Punk's criticism in the first place is, hey man, you're gonna stand up for your friend, great. But we're on na- na- national television. We're on cable TV. Where we're trying to get a bigger cable deal, and you're out here, you know, doing what was not agreed upon. You're not advancing our story. And also, when Punk, one the other one of his criticism was was AEW tailoring their product to, you know, I guess the 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 how large this segment is of the wrestling fan base. But as Punk put it, kind of the niche internet fan base. Yeah, and. You know, I don't know what percentage of the AEW fans base would consider themselves, you know, very much internet wrestling fans or not. I don't know, but I don't know what percentage of fans sitting there uh, last night in Worcester, Mass, watching Edge's promo, like how, what percentage of the of the of the people sitting there were like, were thinking, what the hell is he talking about? A, sig- a significant portion. I would think so. A because, significant portion. You know, we obviously are very much in tune with going on in the world of wrestling because that's our jobs. Yeah. And yes, there's a lot of people who don't, you know, aren't involved in wrestling in some capacity, uh, it, it, you know, in terms of their living that are still very in the weeds, so to say. You know, they get really into the backstage stuff. I don't think that's even close to a majority of wrestling fans. People tune into the show, they want to enjoy the show. And, then they and, go do and, something else. And go do something else. Maybe talk about it with their friends, and that's the extent of it. And if Edge opens the show, not referencing any story that he's involved in, or... In fact, coming out saying, I'm not here as TNT champion. I'm just here as Adam. Yeah. Yeah. So he comes out just to tell us something. I don't need him to do that. I don't... I'm, not, I'm probably not even... I'm sort of like, why is he doing this right now? You know, what there's a way he could have framed it. There's a way he could have framed it. He, he, if he had come out... As TNT champion Adam Copeland, it's talking about what this belt represents. Yeah, that's a good point. What yeah. the Cope Open represents. Yeah, you know, and and using that framework to apply to AEW's existence in a macro sense, mm-hmm. maybe that would have been more effective in, in terms of like, hey, this TNT championship means opportunity. Yeah, just like AEW means opportunity because there's so many people here who might not got a chance to wrestle on a national stage on cable television if not for this company let me ask you this something like that and we haven't heard this but you know tony is booking these shows is this is this the rest because there are several times and even swerve in his segment mentioned this we got osprey or in edge's words osprey yeah mercedes monet and okada that, that was mentioned multiple times throughout yeah, the show. It was. And yes, that's awesome. You got them. That's really cool. Was that shoehorned in as a way of saying people like us too? And if that's the case, again, unnecessary. We see it. We see Osprey you know, out there doing his cool matches. Here's another way to look at it. Not just people like us too, but look. If this place was such a shit show... 
would high profile free agents be signing here? Right. Yeah. 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 Right. You know, if this place was an utter mess backstage. Yeah. Why? Would you know, that that here? gets yeah. out. You know, the, the, the world of pro wrestling is it's a, it's it's a small world, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, people know a lot of people. Yeah. And I would imagine news travels fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it was a complete shit show backstage, I would imagine prospective free agents would be well aware of that. I'm not yeah. saying it's not. Yeah. But I'm saying from AEW's perspective, they're putting that out there, I think, in part because we got three high profile free agents signing with us and not them. Yeah, not those other guys. You know, not the not the super organized company. They didn't yeah. get them. We did. <laughs> so we're not organized. a shit show, see? <laughs> yeah. We're not a messy, you know, we're not a messy room. We're not a Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, so I guess I, I guess my thing is like, look. AEW lately has been on a decent run because they've been concentrating on what they do well and they've been concentrating on trying to advance stories in advance of what seems to be kind of a a freshened up pay-per-view schedule. A couple more pay-per-views added to the year adds a little bit more urgency to your weekly television, ideally. And I think that they've been relatively successful at that lately. It's just get off the fucking internet. Stop caring. St- just just stop, Tony. Stop giving a shit about what anybody says about your company. Don't put that shit on TV. I no. don't care. No. I want Cope to I think Co- I think it's awesome that he's the TNT champion because I think that Christian's reign was getting a little stale. And so you've got this dude who's bringing in Matt Cardona, which was an awesome match. Um, you know, facing you got- Penta next week. He's fanny- he's facing Pentagon next week. And and that's all really good stuff. Focus on that. Nobody needs to hear that. Hey, we're cool too. We're good. We we're we're positive. Nobody needs to hear that shit. It's a waste no. of time. No. It's it a is. waste of time. And I I just wish that they would use their. I was falling asleep three minutes into Edge's promo because I knew what it was. Yeah. You know. Okay. You're now you're on the back foot. You're defensive. That's not a good look. Nobody likes that. You know. Mm-mm. It was ugly when when Bischoff came out because. Uh, WCW was starting to tank in the ratings after WrestleMania 14 and Bischoff comes out and he's got to say, Hey, you know, for 83 weeks, we, we did it. And Vince McMahon, I'm going to challenge you to a match. You know, Vince isn't going to show up. No. It was, it, it reeked of desperation yes. when WWF did the same thing with, you know, the, 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 the nacho man and the huckster, it reeked of desperation. Yep. yep. Act like you're a champion, act like you're a winner. And maybe you'll get to that yeah, maybe, point. Yes, maybe you'll be uh, looked looked on as such. So let's talk about Eddie and Tony Schiavone. They're apparently of we don't give a shit. That's their that, that's their attitude. So during an interview with Adrian Hernandez, uh, one of Puck's former rivals, Eddie Kingston, was asked about Puck's comments on the MMA hours regarding uh, AEW. This is what Eddie had to say. These transcripts come to you from Fightful. Eddie says, he don't work for us. I don't give a fuck. Honestly, he don't work for AEW, so I don't care. Not even mad. If it sounds like I'm mad, it's just the way I talk. I don't care. I know other people do, but I really don't give a fuck because he doesn't work for AEW. That's the way I look at it. If he worked for AEW and did that, then I might feel a certain way, but then I would just let it go and go. Go, that's Phil being Phil. Can't control him. That's his thing. He ain't me and I ain't him. I don't care what he does. I think also in the same interview, he then uh, pivots to saying, what I care about is the talent just got released. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's 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 a perfect response right there. It is doesn't work. And then like uh, says. Tony Schiavone on this recent uh, most recent episode of his podcast, what happened when Conrad Thompson brought up that punk mentioned Tony during his appearance on MMA hours. This is how Tony Schiavone responded. Quote, I really don't give a shit about it. I'm not going to get into this. I know what he said and let him continue to talk if he wants. That's all I got. I don't give a shit. That's all I can say. I can't get into it. It would be stupid for me to get into that. I have no idea what he said with the exception of someone who told me, oh, he brought your name, brought up your name, and here's what he said. I went, so what? So fucking what? So Conrad mentions, you know, he wasn't critical of you, Tony. Tony then said, that's what I'm saying. So what? If he was critical of me, people would say, oh, Shivani is on his podcast going to defend himself. I have nothing to defend. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. They, at least Eddie and Tony Shivani just want to move on. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I you know I I, I think <clears throat> they've done the um, the post tapings uh, you know raw raw stuff. They do that from time to time. Like Dax doing that. Uh, yeah, Dax you see that yeah. that in a vacuum doesn't bother me. If, it's like, if hey, Dax, thanks for coming, everybody. We're having a great time. Yeah, if Dax wants to get on the mic and do a little raw raw thing after the show is aired, hey, 
whatever. <laughs> it's interesting that it's Dax doing it, but <laughs> no, it's um, very interesting that it's but, Dax uh, doing it. <laughs> um, He's finding out what a lot of other people found out. Maybe I guess the question is never mind. I'm not going to say it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Um, he's like i spent a lot of podcast hours you know <laughs> talking know. for that guy <laughs> i know oh what i was gonna say is did punk, this is a joke did punk text dax before or after promo hey lose my number <laughs> <laughs> uh, joking, you know though. let me ask you this this and again this is silly absolutely silliness it really is but it, the, the dynamics can sometimes be interesting the interpersonal dynamics yes when when punk was saying i met a lot of great people he said very like you know brody king uh dan Housen. did he mention dax did he mention ftr i could check in my notes ah, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i don't recall offhand but but uh yeah yeah i don't, you know, I don't know man it, I, you would you would hope here's the thing you would hope punk would see that we'll see the promo i don't know about the twitter activity but the promo and be like, ah, it's just business, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think probably that philosophy works for him when it's convenient for him. It could be. <laughs> but then if he goes on Dax's Twitter and sees that one that he liked about oh like, yeah, Dax yeah, turning heel on heel. Punk, then. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's, it's grown men. But we don't know. know their relationship. Maybe we they laugh no about idea. stuff like that. We don't know. It's, it's, all, it's, funny. it's all jokes and stuff. Yeah, so. it's funny. And, uh, you know, you know, it, it, amongst all of this, it's, it's important to keep in mind that, yes, Punk was critical of his time in AEW, but he made a point of saying and reiterated this point several times, you know, in, in terms of when Ariel asked him, hey, do you have any, like, closing points? Punk even said it again. I wish nothing but the best for yeah. everybody there and for the company. Yeah. Yeah, and you, know, you, you made a good point the other day when we were talking about the punk stuff when he said he doesn't think – I think that's the thing that really stung when he said he doesn't think AEW is a real business. And 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 your comment on that was, you know, it's not – these days, these days, it's not all about drawing attendance. It's about the, the media deals. And and if AEW is one television deal away and, and given their TV ratings, I know a lot of people are like, oh, the TV ratings aren't great. They're still like – one of the top watch shows on cable every night, you know, every Wednesday night that they're on, yep. Yep. they're in the top three usually. Sometimes they're number one. Yep. Uh, and cable networks like that. So they're one healthy TV deal away from being a profitable business. Uh, and that's something that a lot of other companies can't say. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I, and, th and that's a really good point. But don't be, you know, it's it, it's it's the same when it comes to, I'll give you guys some kids some advice on dating, okay? It's been a long time since I've been a single man. Same and, here. But the one thing that I noticed back then is that, you know, whenever old Steve here, and this would happen quite a bit, whenever I'd get dumped, you know what the best thing you could do is? Listen to, to Pearl Jam's Black. Okay, that was when I was 14. That's different. <laughs> when you're an adult. And it would have, this would have helped also. When I was 14, act like you don't give a shit. Act like it ain't no thing. Don't be disrespectful. Don't be rude. But you don't want none of me. I don't want none of you then. That's cool. That's all good. Nothing gets a person back faster <laughs> than acting like you do not care. The second you text, I miss you or anything like that, or slide in their DMS or you unfollow them or you unlike them or whatever. Oh no! Then you're showing that you care. Mm -hmm. You want you, the best chance of getting somebody back? Act like you don't. You've moved on, because then they're like, "Wait a second, did I really mean nothing to this person?" <laughs> and AEW needs to take that same advice. Act like you don't give a single solitary fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yep. uh, before we move on to our AEW recap, let's go ahead and pay some bills. Let's do it. This episode of Going In Raw is sponsored by BetterHelp Steve. Yes. You know, I don't know about you, but I feel like my social battery ain't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been attending a few more get-togethers now that winter pfft, on the way out, weather warming up. I kind of feel like I'm ignoring my social battery level, start to spread myself a little thin when it comes to my social energies. Yeah, man, no, I feel you. I've often asked myself, self, What's the right amount of socializing for me? 
And how do I recharge my social battery after I'm socializing? Yeah, I ask myself those questions all the time. And whether you thrive around people or feel like you need some time alone, therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. You know, back when I was dealing with severe anxiety in my mid-20s, my social battery was basically running on empty. But therapy helped me learn the tools I needed to better cope with my anxiety so I could get back to feeling comfortable in social situations. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is completely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. All you got to do to get started is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, then you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash raw today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash raw you know steve before we get started with our dynamite recap i want to wish maggie our champion a happy birthday oh it's her birthday today how did i not know today. that what in the world oh my so happy goodness. birthday maggie uh maggie is absolutely amazing yeah um and she is our champion happy birthday uh text her right now i didn't even know Till Larson just mentioned it. I'll send her a sticker of Draymond Green. There you go. There you go. While you're doing that, I'll start talking about the Friendo Club setup. Right now, we're mere days. Two days, in fact, away from night one of WrestleMania. That means you got two days to get yourself the Friendo Club set up so you can enter the big blue prediction challenge for WrestleMania weekend. That includes stand and deliver. Which I'm completely lost on. Oh, God, it does. <laughs> it does. I didn't even know that. Wow. And WrestleMania's nights one and two. Ooh, baby. Uh, so there's two ways to join the Friendo Club setup. Patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Or our YouTube channel, Stephen Larson is going in Raw WB and AW podcast. You hit join. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only do you get opportunities to join these prediction challenges, you get bonus episodes. We're recording one later today. I'm excited to see what Steve picks for the topic. Oh, you'll like this one. This is this is gonna be a fun one. I've got it. I've got it on my phone right here. I'll send it to you Looking right when we get it. started taping. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, also, you get to post your questions to our question threads. It's only five dollars a month, um, and uh, uh, doing these bonus episodes, no wrestling talk whatsoever. Tons of fun. We talk about a variety of topics. Last week there was literally three topics we discussed that could have been standalone shows. Oh, dude, yeah. We could have dedicated a whole hour to them. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Um, and Steve, do you have the hat handy for whoever wins the big blue predictions challenge? Muted May Day, uh, one, uh, last time around. <laughs> Look at that awesome hat. Look at that guy. Muted May Day gets. This. You wow. could win yourself a hat greater than or equal to that one <laughs> if you win the WrestleMania weekend prediction challenge. The form is up right now for those who already have the Friendo Club set up. And if you don't get, don't have the Friendo Club set up again. Go to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. The Going In Raw YouTube page. You can join there. Get your predictions in. You guys got till Saturday morning at 8.30 Pacific, 11.30 Eastern to get your picks in because I think Stan Deliver starts at 9 here on the West Coast. Oh, it's a McGriddle pay-per-view, really? It is a McGriddle pay-per-view. Also, we're trying to get subs. Mm -hmm. Hit a bit of a roadblock, a bit of an obstacle here in terms of getting those subs, hitting our sub goal, 201,102. Still want to try to get there by Mania. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see if we can. With your help, I'm sure we can. So hit that subscribe button, that notify bell. Well, while you're hitting stuff, hit that thumbs up. Hit that like, like button. It gives us validation for all our work we put into the show. And it's good to be liked. We like to be liked. Yeah. We like our content to be liked. And I guess it's good for the algorithm over there on the YouTube, too. That probably should be the more important aspect of it, but really, to us, what's most imp- well, mo- what's most important is pleasing Bob Frendo or Bill Frendo. Yeah, that's another point. That's really top. Did we you don't know see, who Bob Frendo is. Do you see Bob Frendo? Was it Bill Frendo or Bob Frendo? <laughs> do you see Bill Frendo's in our comments and our YouTube comments? <laughs> somebody no. created some. Yeah, dude, somebody created a profile for Bill Frendo. Maybe it's actually Bill Frendo. I don't know. I don't know. We've never seen we've never seen Bill Frendo's face. Never heard the voice. It's just Show sounds yourself, like Bill Frendo. I mean, witness protection or something. It's crazy, yeah, man. It is crazy. Anyways, all right. Now we can jump in the dynamite recap. Opened up with this Adam Copeland raw raw promo. You know, and delivery fine. Um, 
content, fine. I just personally didn't need it. You know, he tried to to frame the promo as in it's a great time to be a wrestling fan because the wrestling industry is really good and healthy. And one of the reasons because that is AEW is around to provide competition. That's basically oh, yeah. what it is. Oh, it's you Bob. know, it's so honest. So, so it is. It's Bob Prendo. And uh, I was thinking of his brother, Bill, because he talked about his brother a lot. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh, is, is Bill part of this as well? Yeah, we don't know if they're a, you know, a, a two person team or not. Yeah, right. But it so this is sort of sad, but you know we did our Bray Wyatt documentary review yesterday, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so there's this great comment who says, "As someone who lost their younger sister, I can tell you, trying to stay strong for my mother who had to bury a child was the toughest thing I ever did," mm. and that's so heartbreaking. Yeah, but it's from Bob Prendo. <laughs> so whoever you are out there under the Bob Prendo guys, my condolences and and yes. honestly, my heart goes out to you because that. That's, that, that's, that, that that's sounds tough. like a really tough situation. That's really tough. That's really really tough. Um, all right, get back to the Adam Copeland promo. Yeah, sorry. We don't have to go through it. No, that's fine. Let's go through it verbatim. You know, no, and he says, "Oh God, that'd be horrible." <laughs> no, you know, he talks about all the potential first time matches for him. He mentions Osprey, Kenny Omega, Hangman, Swerve, Joe, Claudio, Mox, Darby, FTR, Young Bucks, Buddy Matthews, Brody King, Malachi Black. Um, he says, I want to I want to celebrate AEW. I want to celebrate the men who started this company. That means the Young Bucks. That means Kenny. That means Cody. And that means Tony Khan. And he says, they're all fans just like you and me. Mm-hmm. And he says, I'm here to have fun. My time in AEW is most fun I've ever had in my entire career. Um, but it's time to move forward. AEW is walking into the future. I'll just finish with what he finished his promo with. There's a reason Okada came here, that Mercedes came here, that Osprey came here, that I came here. So without further ado, let me introduce a man who will symbolize everything that AEW will be going forward. And then he introduces Will Osprey. Yeah. And he comes, Osprey comes to the ring, shakes Cope's hands. Could that be, this match, be Osprey's first title match? It may be all in. Oh, that'd be a good one. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. I mean, there was that jokey bit between them where he looked at the titles like all oh, this. Because, okay, let me ask you this. Sure. What, Edge came out without the title. I know, and he says, I'm, I'm not here as TNT champion. And then the title, like, appeared after he introduced Osprey. <laughs> okay, yeah. Where did they have, was the title hiding under the, the ring? And then it was in his back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it defies the laws. His of back physics. pocket's all stretched out because he has a giant wallet, Steve. <laughs> Because his TNT, he carries his TNT and a title in his dad wallet. There you go. And his Costanza wallet, along and with endless coupons. He sits to Kroger. down and like one hips that constantly out of place because he's got like, he's like four oh, inches of wallet hips. in his back pocket. Yeah. His hips of mine because I got my TNT title, my dad, my dad wallet. Oh um, my goodness! What do you think? Because he dropped the new slogan. I for can't stand AW. it. It's so it's so hard Larson, back to back to WCW. Is where the best wrestle. Where the big boys play. Exactly. <laughs> Look at exactly. the adjective. Wrestle. And that's, well, I mean, that's actually an adj- or a verb, but yes. Wrestle's a verb. What are you talking about? That's why I said that's actually a verb. Oh, I was okay. correcting you. No, oh, okay. I, I was know. Doing the, I was doing the Kevin Nash thing. I know you were. So I should have corrected Kevin Nash. That would have made for an awkward promo. It would have. And he would have just powerbombed. What wrestler from today is most likely to have corrected Kevin Nash? CM when Punk. He- <laughs> it is CM Punk. <laughs> it is CM Punk. <laughs> right there in the middle of a promo, you'd be like, you know, yeah. actually play. Yeah. But what if it was like old school indie CM Punk? He'd be like, it's an a- <laughs> it's a verb, you you know, whatever he would say. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so best wrestle, nay from Larson. No, no, I didn't do it. <clears throat> can you get can you maybe, you know, let's try to be productive here. I mean, we've already given AEW great dating advice. Can you come up with a slogan? You're a very creative guy. Why do we need a slogan? We're the best wrestle. We're the best wrestle. (laughs) So bad. (laughs) Where? What's the etymology of this? Like, I saw, I saw a sign in the crowd. But I didn't know if, like, uh, like uh, two weeks ago. Oh, uh, you know if it, what, what came first? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't because I saw also a tweet around the same time from Tony Khan. 
Yeah, it seems like something that was coined by Tony Khan or their marketing team. Okay, and then they had a plant out there. Which I will say this. I don't like it. Excuse me. I don't think it's necessary. But if they feel like they need a slogan to provide some semblance of focus on terms of the vision of the company, then good. Because for the longest time, there seemingly was no coherent vision. If the coherent vision is this company is where the best people come to wrestle, yeah. therefore we're focusing on in-ring action and telling stories there. All right, focus, I direction, hope, vision. I hope this was unveiled in a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it had to have been. Well, now, first it was workshopped. It was workshopped and someone wrote it on the whiteboard. Oh, oh. Like and everybody Dick, had their light bulbs go off. Like a Dick Whitman situation? Yes. Uh, and so then... They, they, you know, they, they, they pitch it to, you know, in the, in the conference room, maybe Tony, maybe some other executives. So I'm thinking like, yeah, Don Draper's like there yeah. and they come up with nothing and they start, they start to leave and then, and then the light bulb goes off and everybody stops right in front of the door. Yeah. <laughs> and Don Draper puts, we're the best wrestler. <laughs> okay. So wait a second, dude, how is it? We don't have a slogan of our own. We do, isn't don't we? Just be cool is not really good. That's not a, that's that's just our philosophy. It's like, hey, dude, when you're gonna be in chat, you know, don't drop slurs. <laughs> that should that should be our slogan, friend of club. Don't drop slurs. <laughs> um. All right, all right. Well, what what should our slogan be? I don't know, man. You know, we need we who do we know someone who's of the uh, uh, caliber of Don Draper slash Dick Whitman to provide us with? Oh, we really do need the, somebody. Their like, marketing genius. Can Bob Frendo help us out with this one? The, no, the Frendos Bob Frendo is strictly an administrator, man. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, dude, you know, we you know, because I don't know, like we're not like let me check Chartable because we're not the best, you know. No. No, although I'm not sure what area AEW. I guess I guess in star ratings, AEW is the best, That's so they can claim debate. that. I might even be up for debate. New Japan might be, yeah, in terms of star ratings, at least in the recent memory. Uh, Tops there. See. What was I going to look up? I forget now. What was I going chartable? Where our position Chart- is oh, chartable? Yeah. Chartable. Okay. Let's going in raw, where the mediocre talk wrestling. I mean, yeah, you know, going in raw. 19 out of 20. <laughs> uh, I mean, in terms of fan base podcast, those deadlock guys always got our number. So they're like oh, they're three great. above us. Not surprising. Uh, uh, hey, you know, otherwise, dude, you know, we're number two behind deadlock. All right. Going in raw. Not as good as deadlock. <laughs> <laughs> we're three above uh, solemn monster. <laughs> well, going in raw, one uh, statistical error away from uh, being worse than Solid Monster. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, All right, well, man. we got to workshop these. Yeah, we got to figure that one out. We'll workshop it. Uh, anyways, Osprey comes to the ring not just to shake Cope's hand, but he has match. Battle the Wills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Against Powerhouse Hobbs. It's a really fun bout. Yeah, man, I, it was kind of scary. Did did Osprey's uh, uh, he was selling like crazy for Hobbs, and it was awesome. It was probably yeah. Hobbs' best match. Um, the the last bit where he did that like twisting leg drop thing. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh boy, it yeah. looked like yeah, yeah, looked like the back of uh, uh, Osprey's knee might have hit, might have hit Hobbs in the face. Yeah, I, the the camera angle was such that it was like okay, well maybe he had his you know his knee bent so that it didn't. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's sort of hard to tell. It was hard to tell. But uh, in any event, he uh, Hobbs got right, not right up, but he sort of groggily got up and got hit with the hidden blade. Yeah. And uh, that got Osprey the win here. Uh, Did you see Meltzer complaining about uh, Osprey uh, taken? I guess he's talking about the suplex on the ring steps. You know, Too I, many I, bumps on his TV matches. I'll be honest with you. Cotras are kind of aligning here because last night on that spot specifically, I kind of felt the same thing. Yeah. I was like, bro, it's a TV match. Uh, I don't want, you know, I don't want by, by the time he's done with his contract, he still needs to make the big money in WWE. And, uh, yeah. Didn't you hear he got a better financial offer from AEW, Steve? Hey, you know what, man? That's cool. But by the time, you know, it comes. Apparently WWE was was offering entry level NXT number, uh, (laughs) money for Will Ospreay. Wait, is that true? You're just saying no. no, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They're like, you want a 25,000 a year, uh, Non guaranteed deal. We'll, we'll give you some money to move to move to Orlando in that same apartment complex everybody lives in. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, 
But uh, but anyways, after that, Callus gets in the ring, raises uh, both her arms because the, the entire time he's on commentary talking about how great the Callus family is. Uh, and then uh, Hobbs gets pissed off, goes after Osprey. Callus pushes Hobbs back, whispers something to him, then they leave. And then uh, we get Dan- Brian Danielson's uh, top three uh, theme music in the industry right now. Makes his entrance uh, to take on Lance Archer from Eliminate. And, yeah. uh, you know, this is a good match. Archer just tossing Danielson around. But in the end, he was eliminated, Lance Archer. He was. He was. It, it, it was a two really fun back-to-back matches between the Edge promo, sorry, the Cope promo, and these two matches. It took up about 48 minutes of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I thought these two opening bouts, you have uh, Osprey and Danielson facing opponents who are larger. Mm-hmm physically stronger um, and then both having to overcome said opponents to get the win in their own unique ways uh, I thought it was a good juxtaposition when Osprey going up the ramp after his match Danielson comes down for his um, yeah Lance Archer is so much fun to watch he is he's a blast you know when he he has that bit where he choke slams Danielson on the apron and goes get some dude from the timekeeper area to slam that dude onto Danielson right before mm-hmm. commercial break yeah yeah, it's fun. Awesome. Yeah, it's the, it's the level of, of unpredictability and chaos and destruction that Lance Archer can provide a match. Yeah, wildly entertaining. It brings an element of uh, what were they called? Killer Elite Squad. Yeah, yeah, they were so much. Back fun, when we used to spit dudes. water at everybody. Yeah, those guys were so much fun. They were. They yeah. were. So, anyways, uh, Danielson gets the win. Hits the uh, Archer with a knee plus. Looks for another, but then Archer grabs him by the throat. So Danielson hits him with three consecutive head kicks. Then another D plus to get the win. That's right. <clears throat> After that. Oh, gosh, we got to talk about this. Oh, dude, this is honestly, it's becoming my favorite part of the week. This the, file this under so bad. It's hilarious. Chris, what would you file? What would you file Billy Gunn under J versus Jay White under? Oh, garbage, trash, awful. Yeah. Should never have been booked that way. That what was the horrible. fuck was that? That the fuck was that? That was horrible. Uh, well, let's talk about Chris Jericho because, of course, he's if Lionheart he now. Why? What? Why is he still Lionheart? If he's the mentor, shouldn't he be, like Lionheart? Shouldn't he be the mentee? Should yeah. he be the protege? You know, and he even mentions that lyric from Judas during that promo. This pro, mm-hmm. this interview here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Just yeah, be regular get it. Judas, Chris Jericho. He's still shook. He's still shook. The yeah. crowd still isn't really into him, and I think no. that's the. Uh, and I'm, uh, dude. I will almost guarantee, almost guarantee. I can't actually guarantee because I don't know. I'm not in his head, but I can almost guarantee like 90%. It's because people are going to shit on the theme song. Like they're like, it's going to be like 10% of the crowd. Well, it's going to be like 30% of the crowd singing along and other people just not wanting to sing along. Isn't that why? Would it still be better though to have 30% sing along as to nobody sing along to his uh, white zombie theme? Well, he doesn't have to worry about you know, people say the ratio of people singing along or not. But here's the thing in terms of perception, in terms of perception, at least Mm -hmm. you haven't come out to Judas. Yeah. Maybe only 30% of the fans are singing, which of when there's 2000 people, what is that? 600 people. Mm -hmm. Um, But production in terms of how they photograph his entrance can focus on those 600 people singing. Yeah. You just find like the three. So it still seems like, Oh wow. The crowd's really into Chris Jericho. I'm not, he should go away for a while. Is what he should do. I wonder, but I don't I know if, wonder, if if the fact that no that not everybody's singing Judas is is why he's not using it. I don't know why. I don't know what the answer is. Part of me thinks. Part of me thinks it is like part of me thinks it is that. The other part of me thinks that it's just too damn long. The whole sequence just takes up too much time. Not saying he has to do it. He could just use Judas as his regular theme song and not worry about everybody else singing. He could just use it in like a normal person does. But like it's it, it's got this routine now where it's been established as a thing that everybody sings along to. I mean, here's a thought. I don't know if I buy into it, but here's a thought. Tony Khan wanted to stop paying the licensing rights to Chris Jericho for Judas. Oh, that's probably already in Jericho's contract. Um, maybe the idea was for Jericho to do like a sustained face push or be a face for a while. Mm-hmm. And didn't want to use Judas mm-hmm. oh, yeah, right. as a theme. And you thought, well, what if I kind of go back to the Lionheart gimmick? Not that he was exactly a face, especially in WCW as a Lionheart gimmick, but 
that's when he got super over initially. <laughs> so well, I mean, he did transition out of the Lionheart into like just regular Chris Jericho when he started actually showing some personality. I kind of feel like yeah. his when he, he was, was still a, dubbed Lionheart Chris Jericho though in WCW. Was it like ninety seven? Yeah. You're talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because right. he was still using the Lion Salt and Lion Tamer. I mean, all his signature moves were Lion themed still. Were lion themed. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Jericho's there with Renee on the stage. She says, uh, I don't know why anybody's interested in this. She's like, okay, so wait, where are you at with Hook? Because then Jericho says, last week I told Hook that I had a proposition for him when I offered to be his mentor. And even though he agreed, he said something to me that's been sticking in my head all week. So I just want to clarify something with Hook. And that's why I brought him out right now. What is with the run on sentence? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, he opens let's every hit promo the hook with- signal, everybody. Come on. We love Hook, right? I love Hook. You love me. Hit the Hook signal. And so that stupid ass bat signal shows up. Hook, where's my beanie? Oh, you where's want to be Hook? Beanie? All right. So while you look for that, I'll continue being Jericho. So Jericho, Hook comes to the stage. Jericho says, let's hear it for Hook. Now listen, last week when I offered to give you advice and you agreed to do that, you said, I know who you are and I understand what you mean because it's no secret that anyone I've ever aligned with or team with, it ends up in a fight. Everyone I've ever loved, I pushed them all away and that's true. But there's a reason for that. When you play the game at the highest levels like Chris Jericho does, the rules are different. Once you understand that hook, you're going to understand what I'm trying to teach you. I'm not asking you to trust me 100% right now, but I am asking you to believe in me as much as I believe in you. Do I need to, to send out... Send Steve! Chris, I believe in you. I believe in you so much that I got us a match on Collision right here in Worcester, Mass. But Christ... Chris, it says Christ. I but know. Chris, I'll keep my eye on you. And the Jericho says, I wouldn't expect anything less. Bet. All right, but I can't see anything. And seen. And seen. Oh, I got my cultaholic beating right there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Looks warm and comfortable. Put your hat on over it. It's so cozy. It is a it's an incredibly cozy beanie. I think I got it like at a, 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 a what's it called? Um Black Friday sale like two years ago. Oh. Got it for like five bucks. That's a steal. I know. It's amazing. You might Shout have to wear that basketball. tomorrow if you play basketball because it's supposed to be chilly out. <laughs> it's a cold storm that's just rolled in today anyways. Yeah, dude's going to be raining. We, we're not going to be able to play tomorrow, dude. It's supposed to rain a little bit in the morning. We'll see. You know how that court is, man. We'll see. Then we got Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty. They got a promo, so Lee says, hey, man, you know, one surefire way to get to the top in one night, beat the golden child and the first world champ of AEW. And Shane Taylor says, Massachusetts has a history of great fighters. Rocky Marciano, Marvin Hagler, Shane Taylor, and Lee Moriarty are going to add their names to that list. All we got to do is knock out the Ocho and Hook. So I tell you what, your hands can't hit what you can't see. So I wonder if that was a reference to Hook and his beanie being down too low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, so they you challenge him to a match on a uh, collision. Do they have like a cloaking device? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that sucks for them. They're gonna lose. That I know sucks, it does suck. Dude. I Why really them? been enjoying the work they they've been be doing. The jobbers of of the I don't Tag know. Division. It's lame. Put uh, the uh, flight uh, top flight. Do what that. about uh, 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 outrunners? Oh yeah, perfect. Have Turbo Floyd. And uh, the other guy, Truth Magnum. When are those guys going to drop promos? Drop a promo and challenge them and take an L to Lion Hook. Not Shane Taylor Promotions. They're great. They should Outrunners be. are fine, too. But Shane Taylor Promotions, Shane and, and Lee, but doing good work. I know. Let them get some wins. Who's the Ring of Honor tag champions right now? Should be them. Oh, it's the Kingdom still. Wow. Oh, kingdom. Hey. Kingdom. No There's Kingdom no today. Kingdom. But, but unfortunately, Where's... we had Jay White versus Billy Gunn. What the hell was this garbage? So, what the fuck, I man? I think I understand. I think I understand the idea of what they were trying to do, and it's not good. The execution from Billy's part was horrendous. Yeah, man. There was zero urgency. Yeah. In Billy Gunn's. Uh, 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 pummeling of Jay White in the ringside area, in the crowd, in the ring, back to the ringside area, all over the place. It was like he'll slam his head into the barricade a couple times, ambulate around a little bit, mm -hmm. maybe give a fan a high five and go mm -hmm. back to doing the same thing. Yeah. I didn't feel like there was any intensity or passion behind anything Billy was doing. There was. Even when he was trying to kick Jay's head against the ring steps, he did it with all the momentum of a car and idol. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah. It's like if the idea is that you're so incensed that Jay broke into your house that you can't wait to attack him, I need to see, I need to feel that urgency. Mm-hmm. Not you just kind of, oh, all right, this is, we could do it here, we'll do it here, we'll do it here. It was like 10, 12 minutes of Billy just ramming Jay into the barricade, basically. Yeah. And never really rose above that. No, that that's no, that that's what it was. It was slow. It was plotting. It didn't make any sense. There's no way. Like, look, let's let's be honest. Billy Gunn is in absolutely phenomenal shape, but he's sixty. Yeah, years but he's old. sixty years old. And I understand that for some people, you know, in pro wrestling, the older you get, the more powerful you are. But Billy Gunn doesn't fall under that. That's that's re- that that is for main event legends. I don't mean this necessarily as a slide against Billy Gunn. Yeah, you do. It's okay. All right, I do. Basically, everything the acclaimed has done since dropping the tag titles that's been focused on Billy mm-hmm. brought them down. Oh, it has. No, it absolutely has been. When and Billy was the focus of their efforts to get the trios title, I'm like, why is Billy the focus? I know. The acclaimed are two of the hottest uh, talents in all of, a- of AEW, and the focus of the story is Billy Gunn. Get out of here. And that's not a slam on Billy. It's a slam on Tony Khan. It's a slam on on whoever's booking this shit. You're right. You're absolutely right. They were hot. Dude, there was a period of time when they were one of, it was like them, Jade. There was like some real homegrown AEW talent that you could build upon. And they are not that anymore. Caster acts like he doesn't even want to be there. And I don't know if it's a matter of him not being able to you know, handle his own shit on social media and getting punished for it. I don't know what the deal is. I don't. Um, you know, I've got faith that Bowens can probably succeed as a solo act. Absolutely. Bowens is great. He's great on the mic. He's real. he's great in the ring. He's, he's going to need, he's going to need like a serious, because here's the thing, you know how it is when people are in it, when, when, when an act is a tag team, unless there is a serious sort of rebrand for whoever goes solo and is meant to be getting pushed. Yeah. Like otherwise people just want what they had before. Yeah. You know, yeah. every successful solo guy that came from a tag team has successfully rebranded. You saw how with Roman Reigns, when they took him out of the shield and he was still just shield guy. That's why main event after main event after main event of WrestleMania sucked because he didn't know who he was. He was just guy who wasn't in the shield anymore. I always said this about Big E's solo run that he should have had much more of a rebrand. But you look at like Triple H, man. When that dude became the game and he was no longer part of DX, you get that rebrand. People see you in a fresh light, and that's what you need. And I and Bones, I hope that they do that with Bones because the acclaimed, they're done. They're cooked. They're cooked. And so Jay the, White's going to be there too if he keep on <laughs> treating him like this. I he couldn't I know, beat I a 60-year-old guy. He couldn't beat a one-legged MJF. I know. I know. What? I know. This was egregious. Because this, Jay White in this 10, 12 minute match might have got a combined two and a half minutes of offense. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Billy hit him with two famousers, calls for another, instead goes, gets a chair from ringside. The guns come to the ring and kind of get between Billy and Jay to kind of save him. Billy pushes, I think, Austin aside. Jay low blows him. And so the match ends by DQ. Horrendous. Which Billy Horrendous. Gunn wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Billy, Billy gets the win yeah. by DQ. In no universe should a 60-year-old Billy Gunn have a win in any capacity over Jay White. No, no, he shouldn't. I'm sorry. Billy he, should he be should there not. in AEW at this point in his career to help get people over. Yep. Yep. And yep. that's not what he's doing. Yep. And, I, I, again, I don't intend that necessarily as a slight at Billy Gunn. It's a slight towards the AEW creative. Mm-hmm. It is. It absolutely is. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, Jay sets up for a chair shot on Billy and the acclaim run down to make the save. Yeah. But there, there's, there's no heat behind this at, at all. No there one really, isn't. No one really there, there's cares. There's none. There's none. Yeah. No one really cares. Uh, after that, uh, we see the best friends arrive. Sue is in tow. They've got that tag match against the Young Bucks, against Nicholas and Matthew. Uh, we had a really great Willow Nightingale interview. This was awesome. My only problem with this is the way it was staged. I like They're trying something new. I get it. Wasn't huge into it. Go ahead. This is one of the instances where it have been better in the ring. 
Yeah, I agree, yeah, because that crowd was, like, super into Willow. I know, and let her be in the middle of, of it all mm -hmm. rather than up on the stage. I agree with that. She had to have her back to everybody. I yeah. know, and oh, they had to turn around when they were cheering for her and stuff, and it was, it was yeah, made for a little and bit of an awkward. When Mercedes went and made her way down to the ring, she was walking backwards. <laughs> I was like, why I know. are you doing that? And I was like, oh, okay, maybe they're going to have the, uh, the Thunder Rosa Mariah May match next, and, and Mercedes is going to be like, hey, I'm, I'm here now. I want to you know scout the rest of the women's division no she was gone yeah, that wasn't even was the next match gone. yeah she started to walk backwards down the ramp and then she was gone uh so uh willow shows up with statlander who looked like she was from the future and uh stokely because statlander was wearing like it looked like uh the first couple x-men movies outfit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so renee asks her how's it feel to have a tbs title bitch she says renee i'm feeling mother fluffing great you know I really loved this city for years and years. I was busting my butt in this town. I'd pack myself into a car and drive down the Merritt Parkway, sometimes with this girl right next to me. And sometimes we'd wrestle at a place called the White Eagle, which got a huge pop. She says, obviously, it sounds very special to you guys. It's special to a lot of wrestlers. So many of us have left our sweat in the canvas. But to me, this is really a home away from home. This is where I learned who Willow is, where I figured out who I am. I question, does a girl like me belong in wrestling? Every time I wondered if a weird, quirky, unconventional, chubby, curly-haired freak like me, if I belonged, if I could make it in wrestling, your cheers reassured me. The applause, uh, this applause is what watered me and helped me blossom into the woman standing here today, the woman who's going to be challenging for the TBS title. You have all made me so confident with your love and support that I know I'm going to be the smiling face of TBS. I thought that was an awesome promo, man. I thought that was great. It was fantastic. Um, so Stokely's next says, I'm going to say something uncharacteristic of me. I'm going to say something special about this young lady. Last week, uh, she had what the kids call a banger and knocked it out of the park. Willow Nightingale is something special. Week after week after week, she impresses me. And not only does she impress me, she impresses the entire world. Well, he's interrupted by Mercedes. CEO. CEO. So she walks out and says, Worcester, please say hello to your CEO. E O. Now, Will, I can't wait to watch you tear it up with Julia at Dynasty because whoever is going to be the TBS champ at Double or Nothing, I got next because in Vegas. So it's not Monet, it's Monet. It's Monet. Yeah, changes like everything. Money. Like yeah, money, right. yeah. Yeah, Monet. Not like the painter, not like the impressionist painter, <laughs> Monet. No, it's not like Monet. It's Monday. Remember that time at uh, Trivia? They showed a painting. They're like, who did this painting? And like the dude's signature And the was signature was, was there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and people still got it wrong. Dude, Justice Skosh is now at the same place as Ghost in the Hot Tub. Interesting. I noticed that. I went back and looked at it again. Isn't that crazy? That is. We are the kings now of, of, of our trivia location. Dominant. Let's do not it. Not two, not three, not four. Uh, exactly. <laughs> anyways, after that, we had the Young Bucks versus the Best Friends. Of course, uh, there was some shenanigans here with an exposed turnbuckle, uh, which led to uh, the... Uh, Matt the, rolls up uh, the yeah, Trent after yeah. catapulting him into the exposed turnbuckle. This is a fun match. Crowd was yeah. super into it, too. Uh, also, in advance of this, while walking down the ramp... Matthew gave a shout out to Jack Perry. Said, "I like your work." Called scapegoat, yeah. Scapegoat. Tells I love your work. Uh, Sue to cry him a river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think Jack Perry, when he returns, he's going to be part of uh, uh, the the Young Bucks organization? Now? Probably, but maybe this is just all in response to Phil's interview on the MMA hours. Yeah, I didn't know which one. You know, yeah, yeah. Which, uh, if it's the former. Fine, if it's the latter, just move on, for heaven's sakes. I know you want to get people talking and get that heat. Oh, I agree. Matthew yeah. and Nicholas, for heaven's sakes, just move on. I know, dude. It's not a good look. Just dude, move on. Right now, you're in the DMs. You know, it's, it's living rent-free in your head. Got to act like you don't care anymore. Exactly. Just move on. Just move. It was fun when they were in Chicago and started doing CM Punk's moves, when they were doing yeah. the uh, trios thing. That should have been a one-night-only thing. Exactly. Get that out of your system and just move on. So uh, then we had this big, like, shocking turn, which, I don't know, seemed undercooked to me. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's Trent. So Trent's sitting in the ring. He's super pissed at himself. Orange helps him up. Trent, Chuck, and Orange get in position for a <laughs> hug. Instead, Trent just completely blasts Orange Cassidy with a running knee. Chuck looks like he's immediately about to cry. And then Trent walks past Chuck and Sue, and he beats feet out of there. So 
the best friends no mas maybe i don't know who know, who, who knows whose side chuck is going to choose if he's even oh, cleared wow, any time yeah. soon to wrestle bad guy chuck taylor maybe okay, maybe that could be you know maybe the reason it seems undercooked is because they never really do anything with trent yeah well he's also like very stone faced you know it's not like yeah i've seen a lot of emotion from him and so seeing him like turn on orange cassidy it was like okay yeah that i guess that fits because like he never really doesn't have much he's he's got like a basically a poker face you know it's like yeah I don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. there of. was a, a a pretty good uh, backstage bit with trent and statlander where she runs up to him and is like what the heck why did you do that oh. and he just leans in and whispers something to her mm. and leaves okay like, oh all right well what is what was that they're in they're in they're in worcester uh yeah. do we know are there any like good like you know food items that he was going to be like hey i'm going to go get it's a good a question worcester style hot dog or something don't know i don't know the answer to that question <laughs> yeah anyways uh i do know who won this thunder rosa with the uh x-men 97 shout out outfit on versus mariah may good uh, match yeah this is a good match right here and uh thunder rosa gets the win with a tijuana bomb and uh, does a lot of shit talking to Tony Storm, who's that commentary looking lovely in like an old school Hollywood type dress. A gown, yeah. A gown, thank you. Yeah, a gown. Uh, so, yeah, that's probably going to happen at Dynasty, I'd imagine. Yeah, 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 I would think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'll be yeah. a good match, too. Oh, that'll be a really good match. What odds do you give Thunder Rosa of getting that title? Basically none. Zero. Yeah. Basically none. 2% botch. Uh, then we got a Penta Alex Abrahantis promo. So Alex says, <laughs> everywhere we go, we feel it. Penta is for the people, and the people are for Penta. And what the people have been asking for is for Penta to have gold. So Penta. Then Penta says, Penta says, Adam Copeland, why don't you stop facing outsiders and defend the TNT title against an AEW original next week? Then Alex says, what the people want and what the people need. And Penta says, is a champion who has zero miedo. I love I love Pentagon's voice. I know it's so I don't know something. It's got so much character to it. It really does. It's got gravitas. Alex, I could do without. He's a bit yeah. too too articulate. <laughs> well, I just feel like Alex is a little too over the top. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, he's just yeah. a bit over the top. Uh, and then we had our main event segment. This was great. This was awesome. It was Swerve and Samoa Joe and their contract signing. So Swerve shows up first. Shivani introduces Joe. Joe comes to the ring, takes a seat. Shivani gives Joe the contract first. Crowd is chanting Swerve's house. Joe signs. Tony asks for Swerve to sign. Joe says, shut up, Shivani. We're out here in front of a lot of people who seem to care about you a lot, so I thought I'd join that group and give you a little bit of advice before you sign this contract. Talking to Swerve, not Shivani. He says, see, I think you're working on bad information, Swerve. I think you understand where you come from. I've watched it all, from your career-defining feud with Hangman, where I believe you strung him up with that chain right there because Swerve had a, like his chain on. Yeah. He said, good and proper. He said, then your meteoric rise, not one but two championship opportunities. How else could this fairy tale end, Swerve? But with a big victory, with everybody happy and celebrating a new champion. See, Swerve, that's the bad information you've been working on because I'm about to tell this man the truth. Truth is, signing this contract is doom and destruction. It's a big mistake. It's a career-defining mistake to step in the ring with me right now. You know what? Let me put it into terms that a rapper could understand. I'm going to beat you down so severely it's going to leave you mentally scarred like you left Diddy's party too late. Oof. Ooh, ee. Oof. ooh, jeez, Joe, spicy. He says, so my brother, now that you have the right information, why don't you do the right thing? So then Swerve, who wasn't sitting this whole time, he was standing up. Yep. Grabs a mic and says, before I sign this contract, Joe, just know I wanted this moment all my life. I dreamt about this moment because I didn't think it was actually possible. Understand that my destination is filled with the long, winding road of obstacles and roadblocks, but you know when I arrive, the, that feeling is sweet. That journey has taken me all the way to main eventing Dynasty, and that's exactly what we're building here in AEW, a dynasty with signings like Okada, Mercedes, Osprey. Now, truth be told, Joe, this championship, larger than both of us. I understand the dangers of facing you for it. Everything about your title reign so far has been dangerous. You are the definition of a killer, but so am I. April 21st, Dynasty, I show you that I'm every bit of that man. I grab the keys to the dynasty and I turn AEW into whose house? Of course, crowd says, Swerve's house. And he says, now run the fate on that, bitch. So then Joe sort of pushes Swerve, Swerve decks him. And then as Joe is recoiling from the punch, 
uh, Swerve puts his chain around him and tries to choke him, but Joe no sells it completely. Just grabs the chain, turns around, and uh, and punches him in the and uh, punches Swerve in the head with it. Punches him in the back of the head. Swerve gets busted open. Joe then punches Swerve with the chain repeatedly in the corner until the refs come to break it up. The refs escort Joe up the ramp. Swerve crawls to the mic and and the contract, and he's got blood just coming down everywhere. And he starts laughing. He's like, <laughs> "Hey, Joe." I love this shit. If you think that's all you got, then I'm taking your title from you. And then Swerve like dips the pen in his blood, signs a contract with it, and then grabs a bunch on his hand and just like puts it all over the contract. Joe's freaked out, but he rushes back to the ring and kicks Swerve in the nuts, hits him with an Uranagi through the table, leans over him and talks shit, then poses with a title above Swerve. All the confidence points on Swerve beating Joe. Seems likely, and it's the right call. It is the right call. It's the absolute right call. Yeah, this was a really good segment. It was. Um, it was awesome. You know, having having Joe punch Swerve in the head, I don't know, at least a half a dozen times with the mm. chain wrapped around his fist and Swerve getting up and laughing at Joe is a good story beat. You know, and it, it's, it, it provides a lot of heat now going into this feud. Absolutely. And, I, I'm you know, I don't I don't necessarily want them to, to, to mirror a lot of what Swerve and Hangman did in their Texas death match, but it'd be pretty fun if this was something more than just a standard match, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let them go beyond the bounds of a standard wrestling match. Do something a little more interesting. I think mm-hmm. that'd be fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, man, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I mean, uh, a standard wrestling match would be really good because they're two excellent pro wrestlers, but let them well, let them open up a rematch. They can always do a rematch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and say let them open up the playbook a little bit, so to say, and, and mm-hmm. be a little more adventurous with how they put this together. Like one of those matches on the back of a truck bed. Is That's that not what exactly about? what I was advocating for. No, kind of cool, but you green screen it. <laughs> you want do you have a couple people off camera rocking the truck back and forth to make it look like it's actually on the road? That's what yeah, you're talking dudes about. Dudes in like green outfits doing that, so they all get. Grease, mm-hmm. green screened out <laughs> yeah exactly and then like you know the truck launches off a cliff and they're like fighting while it's going down but then it lands sticks a landing there you go <laughs> and they do as well still fighting <laughs> yeah still fighting yeah you can take it anywhere at that point to the seas i guess so yeah mm-hmm. sure i mean if you're doing it in front of a green screen world is your oyster yeah more than the world Universe, uh, multiverse, the multiverse. Chains. Jonathan Vieira here in our question thread says, uh, "Where would you guys go to take a long vacation if you had the tribal chief set up?" Well, let me preface it by asking: this. Did you watch Fallon last night, the Tonight Show? Mm-mm. I can't stand Jimmy Fallon. I think he's cringy, and yeah, I, I'm not I huge on him either. I saw like a couple clips, and I was like, "Oh God, I, I don't like any of this stuff." So I didn't watch it really. I just watched a couple clips. Oh, all right. I didn't know if they were talking about. You know, Roman talks about umbrella service and stuff like that. He's like, hey, after after Sunday, I'm going on vacation. Long vacation (laughs) all the way till August. Did you like when Ariel Helwani asked Cody, uh, hey, when did you know Roman was going to win? He says, when I ate the spear and I heard three count. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't watch. I didn't actually watch. Like, I just saw, like, the clip of Cody talking, the quotes that we had in the thing. Yeah. But I heard people on Twitter. I saw people on Twitter claim that Helwani was seemingly annoyed that Cody wasn't running down AEW. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know how true that is if people were projecting or not, but kind of funny if true because Helwani seems to have a contentious relationship with uh, at least Tony Khan. Yeah, that definitely seems to be the case. Uh, Tanner's Garden here says, what could Seth have in mind for Plan B? I think Plan B uh, was just for Raw, and that was Cody showing up when he wasn't supposed to be there. I think that's all it was. But given that he always says he always has a Plan B. Well, he is the architect. Yeah. Well, he's the architect, so he's got like a one of those tubes that you put blueprints in. Yeah, yeah. But you think this is just has the blueprint paper? No, lead pipe <laughs> inside. Yeah. It's filled with rocks. There really you go. Dense rocks. Uh, oh, we never did answer. If if you had the tribal chief set up, where'd you go on vacation? Man, do do we know? Did uh, anybody get the uh, the Powerball? Oh, I don't know. Mega Millions. It's like I over a billion dollars. That's crazy. Gosh, I mean, there's I'm uh, so many places. I, I've never even been to Hawaii. I'll just say Hawaii. Jesus, it's $1.23 billion. Is the next drawing tonight? Uh, I think it's next Wednesday. Oh, all right. Yeah, oh my gosh, that's crazy. It'll I- increase even more by then, then. 
Where would I go on vacation if I won Powerball, which is clearly tribal chief money? Yeah. No, I'd go to Hawaii. I've never even been to Hawaii before. I'd go to Disneyland. <laughs> All right. I would You'd rent, rent out the park for you and your family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rent out Disneyland for a day. Yeah. Do that shit. Or at least the Star Wars area. Uh, the Blind Mask says, do you think we'll ever see people like Shivani in the WWE Hall of Fame? Like Shivani? Yeah. Uh, I doubt or it. Or any current AEW people being ad- inducted eventually. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, like, like Jericho Mox, will go in the Hall of Fame. Jericho. Danielson will. Mox will. Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. not while they're with the company, though. No, but afterwards, yeah. Uh, Wayne Scoggins here says, what do you guys think about Cody getting disqualified on purpose because they want bloodline rules and they lay waste to rock and Roman so the Avengers can assemble for night two? No, that'd be so underwhelming. Like, why would... Co- no. No. Cody should want to win. Yeah, He's he a good guy. Win. He wants one-on-one with Roman. Yeah. That's what he wants. Uh, uh, Payday here says, if WWE were to add women's mid-card titles after Mania, how many and who should be the first champions? Should each brand get a mid-card champ or yep. one that's cross-brands? Nope. Yep. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Tag titles. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. Uh, yeah, mid-card titles for each brand. Okay. Yeah. The tag titles, okay. I guess, can float. Yeah. Those can float. Uh, AJ Otani says, if you had to stand uncomfortably close to any moment in wrestling history like that dude did on Monday with Seth, what would it be? Oh, it's when Bret Hart's wife was yelling at Triple H. That's so uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, I know you did it, Hunter. I owe you. I know you know. I know you knew. I didn't know. <laughs> He's all looking at the ground. I, didn't I know. know. Um, let's see here. Uh, we kind of answered this, but we'll, we can we can talk about it some more. Lux asks, what went wrong with the acclaimed? Billy became the focus of their story. Yeah. 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 No, what went wrong with the acclaimed was FTR. Because it was, oh, we want, they want the tag titles. Or Tony wanted them to have the tag. To, boy, he killed the acclaimed. Let's job them out to the ass boys. And even the ass boys really sort of disappeared, you know, like they're doing the thing with the acclaim, but they're all just in, you know, yeah, acclaimed island. <laughs> and, and yeah. And then just so they can get them on FTR. Yeah. Um, AJ's username asked predictions coming out today. Yes. Out now. Yes. So videos are up. If that's what uh, AJ is referring to. But I'm guessing it's the predictions form that is up currently. Yes. That's up too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll do the predictions videos are up over at Friendo Club Wrestling. Yep. So go sub to that. Lavender Here, I'll says, see how many uh, how many entries we have so far. Lavender says, I know we don't want Gunther to lose, no. but how else slash who else can he lose to in order to get him away from the IC title picture and inevitably into the World Heavyweight Championship picture? Ilya. Ilya, Sheamus. Those are the only two names I'll accept. Really, Sheamus? Yeah, I think so. I think there's enough of a story with Sheamus, and, and uh, you can make the point that Sheamus – came closest to beating Gunther at Clash of the Castle, and the match was awesome. Oh, it was a good match. It's the one belt Sheamus hasn't won in WWE. Forbes says, do you think Mercedes still not cleared to wrestle? Yeah. Uh, That's why she's not wrestling until double or nothing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, double, yeah, she said that. Double or nothing's going to be her thing. Yep, yep. Uh, Alex Foster here says, did you guys hear about Mello and Trick being the first two black wrestlers to main event an NXT premium live event? That makes sense. It's awesome. Uh, John and Alistair voice says, I agree with your guys's point that everyone wants to see cool shit in wrestling. What is the epitome of cool shit in wrestling? You know, Braun did a lot of cool shit in this feud against Roman. He did. He, he did. Tor- brought down. Oh, no, did Kane do that to him? I'll be honest. When Brock came out and he, he did the forklift to the ring in their oh, last, the tractor? last man standing match. Yeah. Tractor, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That was usually cool, cool stuff involves destroying things in a surprising way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you could do that, destroy things on like a pretty significant level mm-hmm. in a way that's surprising. Absolutely, I'll be invested. Mm-hmm. Ooh, here's a good one. I like time travel questions. Of course, White Brownie says, "If you guys could stop one of these things from happening, thus changing history, which would it be?" Preventing the Montreal screw job or AOL Time Warner 
leaving WCW behind. So you can either install your own guy that's like loves wrestling yeah. there in Time Warner, AOL Time Warner, instead of that dude who hated it. Or I would say that because like the Montreal screw job, what are you gonna do? Tell you know, tell Brett, hey, they're gonna screw job you. Yeah, no. Okay, well, we'll see about that, you know. Well then he'll just like try to shoot win the match. Yeah. He'd just knock out Shawn Michaels. It'd be him. awkward in, in some other way, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd been interesting to see what would have happened to WCW if it had continued on after mm -hmm. 2001. If Fox had, had you know, because Fox is on the verge. Bishop was like, yeah, no, I got WCW. You want you want to do this? And Fox was like, yeah. And then, yeah. And then they yeah. found out that he didn't actually own WCW yet. And he was like, nah, nah. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Samps here says, what match outcome surprised you the most in your history of watching wrestling? What match outcome surprises the most? Goldberg yeah. Brock won. Not won. When Goldberg came back and beat Brock. Yeah. We are on tape, you know? Yeah. We have yeah. the footage of it. Yeah, that was surprising. That was really surprising. Uh, here's a question for you. Linear Prince says, with Steve having wrestle juice... Has Larson ever thought about having a solo YouTube channel? And why is the answer no? So the most I'll ever do as a solo YouTube channel is I would maybe, and I don't think it's worth the investment of, of money in it, is do, but I've thought about it, is have a shorts channel of basketball shoes and how they perform outdoors. That is, can you please do that? It just like I have to buy. I need that. It's like a hundred plus dollars to buy these shoes. Man. What about this? And I'm not going to make that money back. Because I thought about this. Because I know you've said that before, right? Okay. Yeah. The best cheap, like Walmart has an one for twenty three dollars. Yeah, I hear those are garbage though. Okay, that's fine. You hear that, but you got to test it yourself, and it's only twenty three bucks. What about those those mystery uh, shoes you found on Amazon? I know I was yeah because I, I went back to that too. I was like, what are these Ashion? But here's the thing, though, Steve. No one cares about those. They want to know how the book ones perform on outdoor courts, like the shoes that have the reputation already from the, hey, the brands that have the a, reputation. All you need is a good thumbnail and a and a and a and a title. You know, I'm saying this is just short. Shocked like, at how well videos. these twenty dollars shoes work, and then they just fall apart, and you're like, shocking, they fell apart. Yeah, shocking, they fell apart. <laughs> and then you light them on fire at the end. <laughs> that's the first good idea you've had <laughs> it's all happens in 60 seconds because it's a exactly. short <laughs> but i like i would show, necessarily show my face it wouldn't and i wouldn't be yeah. talking or anything it would just oh ai hey, voice that's cool too maybe or just or just titles or something yeah you do like stone cold ai voice God because damn, there's a look at these shoes <laughs> there's a template to all the 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 sneaker short videos you watch especially when they do like usually when they do the short form sneaker reviews it's all indoors so you do the traction test First part of that is they the they, 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 they do a squeak test and how loud they squeak. Oh yeah. And then they do attraction to the side, like lateral attraction, how fast the shoe stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then then maybe they'll talk about support and cushioning, and that's how it always goes. Okay, all right. And then you do have they drop stand. in there. I only rolled my ankle four times. No, no, not in the short form. But I have at least watched at least two sneaker reviews where someone talked about at least spraining, if not breaking their ankle on a pair of shoes. And why they wouldn't recommend them because of that. <laughs> Not they enough lateral containment. In the hospital or something? We're in the, we're no, in this is after the... Well, like the one I saw, I was watching someone review like the newest LeBrons. And he he was like... Oh, I can't remember. I think because the stack was high or something. Mm -hmm. Or the lateral containment wasn't good. Because like I, I, you know, I reviewed the LeBron 20s and I sprained and broke my ankle on that. And they didn't fix the problems in this, so I can't recommend it. Oh, wow. That's hilarious. Damn. <laughs> Broke my ankle. <laughs> These shoes are dog shit. Zero out of ten. I Zero out of ten, ankle. I know. <laughs> Squeak, the... five out of five. You know, <laughs> traction, three and a half out of ten. My, sprained my ankle. Cushion, zero out of ten. <laughs> Broke my ankle. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. That's going to do it for the show today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Until next time, we'll see you around. Goodbye. <laughs>